at any rate, so I'm going to get started. This is a, uh, I'm kind of doing a, a dual part presentation here. Uh, when one of the uh, breakout sessions I went to was about flipped classroom, and certainly um, I believe that uh, everyone uh, is probably familiar with the flipped classroom, and I was really kind of enamored about this, and I've been kind of working on it uh, ever since um, um, I've, I've uh, uh, become introduced to it. So this is uh, what I call a class preparation activity, uh, CPA. Um, and so it really is one of my favorite activities. So for the class preparation activity, here are my goals uh, for the, for the uh, uh, CPA. One, students become familiar with the concepts prior to class. Now, I know that there's a rumor out there that students don't read uh, the material prior to class. I don't know how uh, true that is, but this at least forces the students to look up uh, the uh, information in order to, uh, to find the answers. <clears throat> All right. I heard something. And <clears throat> so two, the online version looks like their test. Uh, so, and I'll, I'll talk about that uh, more here in a few minutes. Uh, and then um, it allows me to be able to identify areas where students may be struggling, concepts they may be struggling with. And so, you know, how, how are these prepared? So I prepare these with TestGen, which is a software for uh, McGraw-Hill. Um, I prepare one uh, CPA for each chapter that we cover um, in the, uh, during the semester. I create, sometimes I create them online and I, I integrate them into Blackboard. And then I always create a paper copy as well. So, and I'll just kind of talk about a little later the difference between the two. So, when I talk about students become familiar with concepts prior to class, what I'm referring to is the chapter CPA is due the Sunday before we cover the chapter. So, they're supposedly supposed to read the chapter uh, prior to coming to class anyway. But what this does is it forces them, if they want to get credit for it, uh, to go in and at least look up the uh, uh, the answers, and I don't uh, I don't have uh, questions about um, how do I get access to the to the ebook, so it forces them to at least look at the chapters. Two, online version looks like their test, so when when I create the online CPA uh, and integrate it into Blackboard. It looks just like uh, the uh, the test that they're going to take in Blackboard. So by the uh, you know by the time they take their first test, uh, they are uh, uh, they may we may have covered three or four chapters, and they have seen this format three or four times. And so what happens is that testing anxiety diminishes, and they look at this and oh. This is just like a, uh, uh, a CPA. And so I've gotten those types of comments from the students. Um, you know, students can print their CPA, and we discuss the answers in class. And that's both in online as well as the printed versions. So and normally what we do is we, you know, we're working, if, if we're doing printed, the printed version, and we're just using it, using it as an in-class activity, we'll put them in groups. I'll put them in groups and uh, assign certain number of questions for each group. And within Collaborate, I do that, break those out, uh, break the students out into groups, and they go into groups. I give them, you know, whatever it is, 20 minutes. And as a group, they come up with the answers. Then we come back um, as a um, entire class and we go through the answers, talk about concepts that uh, uh, they all, they have questions about. And then the students keep the printed versions and they use it as a study guide. So goal three, 
identify areas where students are struggling. So when they are when they do the online versions, which are which are due on Sunday, um, it allows me to then go into Blackboard and run a report. And so what I'm looking for are questions that a number of students have missed. And then that allows me to go and create uh, activities that are focused specifically on areas where they may be struggling and really kind of focus the, uh, uh, the lecture on areas that, uh, um, you know, where I think we need some, some work on. And again, we're, we're always, I'm always putting them in groups to talk about their answers, to discuss them, uh, those types of things. And when I'm making up uh, some uh, activities just for those particular areas. And then, um, again, we talk about them, small groups, then we talk about them as a class so that everybody has an opportunity to, uh, uh, to really uh, get into the conversation, kind of understand, all right, here's the concept, and here are examples of how we apply that concept. And if we want to do an inference, what, is, what does that mean? How can we infer, and, you can, and you're able to communicate that you understand that concept so that you're not tricked up by the question uh, on a test. You you know the definition, but you may be having problems applying the definition in a number of different ways. So that creates some very interesting conversations with the students. And so from a paper standpoint, this is just uh, an example of the paper version. And so, um, you know, I put these out again. There may there are some classes where we do all paper version. Sometimes we're I'm doing online and then just using these as supplemental um, um, assignments or in class activities, depending on the situation. This is the online version, and this is this is uh, one that has been uh, uh, integrated into Blackboard. And again, it looks a lot like the uh, uh, the test that they will take. <clears throat> and then here's an example of going into Blackboard after uh, students have uh, done their CPA online. And then I, it allows me to drill down and understand this particular uh, question. Um, two students, two students got it right. And then uh, four students uh, uh, had the incorrect answer. So again, this would allow me to go back before class, create some activities around this particular concept so that we can talk further about it to help them understand how to apply uh, the, uh, the concept. And then, um, you know, kind of how do I use these things really as 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 low stakes activities um i use them for the class participation uh portion of uh uh of the grades you know they may be worth about six points at the at the most i use them for in-class activities uh supplemental activity as well as uh test study guides uh jennifer actually has added them uh to the teacher resources shell uh, in BMGT 1101. So it has them, uh, has all of the chapters, has um, um, the exam reviews as well, has the answer sheets as well. And then other courses I've created uh, for them, uh, 2200, 2299, and 1102. Um, haven't really used them for 2299 or 1102, but at least I have them. So if I'm, if I'm, um, uh, pressed for an activity, I can always go into my resources and, and pull one of those out uh, if we need further clarification of a concept uh, for a particular chapter. And so, uh, John, I think that I have done uh, my part. I'm going to conclude at that at this point, and I think I'm within my my 10 minute uh, uh, time frame. So if you have questions, I'm going to, uh, it, it looks as though while I'm sharing, I can't, uh, I can't hear anyone. All right, Roger, can you hear me now? 
I hear you now. Thanks. Jim. Okay, perfect. So, Roger, I do have a question for you. Um, sure. Could you give us the the best experience uh, or the or the best student reaction that you've had from using these CPAs in the class? The best reaction, um, I would say, um, there was a time when uh, early on when. Uh, I was wondering whether or not they were effective. And I was talk I, I spoke to both my class and talking uh, about, you know, is this something really that uh, we want to do? And uh, um, I was thinking, you know, whether or not they thought that it was of value. And, um, you know, there, there were a number of students that spoke out and said, no, this is very, very, these are very, very helpful uh, for, for studying for our test. Uh, and there was not one student that said that we should not do uh, the CPA, the work in the CPAs. And so that was that was some very, very good feedback for me. Thank you, Roger. Anybody else have a question for Roger? Yeah, Jim, uh, go ahead. Uh, Roger, I have a question. Uh, how do you find the, 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 these activities, these CPA things, uh, do you see those reflected uh, in your written assignments for 1101? Um, help, help, help me to to understand uh, the question, John. I'm not. I mean, Tom. I'm not. I'm not sure that I understand your question. Can you? Okay. Well, you, you've got what four written assignments in 1101, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, do you see the quality? Uh, let's say to phrase it a little different way. Do you see the quality of the writing assignments? Uh, changing uh, or any of uh, this information being reflected uh, in your writing assignments? Um, For example, so when they do the financial statements piece, mm -hmm. where they have to analyze the companies, mm -hmm. uh, do they do, do better, worse, about the same? Well, uh, Tom, I don't, you know, I don't know that I could track their performance um, on those uh, uh, on those specific assignments, because um, I spend a lot of time um, um, on those accounting areas. So there might be three sessions uh, where we are uh, talking about break-even analysis, um, the ratios. So we are, you know, there's a lot of information that's covered there in terms of uh, those particular writing assignments. I don't know that the CPAs are, you know, very helpful in, in you know, from that standpoint. Uh, but what I've noticed is that uh, in their writings, a number of things that, you know, examples um, that may come out of the CPAs and our conversation, conversation will then be incorporated into the writing, the text aspect of, uh, of those writing assignments. Okay, thank you. You, you know, Tom, I would also say to that, uh, you know, Roger doesn't know if it, if it helps in the financial ratio part of it. I, I, think, we owe, I think we need to look at this from a, a continuum or a spectrum perspective, right? If, if the end result is that they can go in and correctly find, uh, calculate, and assess what financial ratios are. You know, I'll, not all of our students can do that uh, from one class meeting. So if we look at this and we say, okay, Roger uses a CPA before he gets to class, he's, he's trying to bring everybody up to a, a more equal level when it comes to understanding the basics of what those financial ratios are, right? And so he can't progress into deeper uh, content. He can't, he can't go to a analytical conversation if people aren't ready with the basics to, to have that, uh, to have that deeper conversation. So while, you know, while Roger said he, he may not be able to, to track a, a correlation to those, I do think that it, it shows intention on our part that we're taking these steps to get students ready, uh, ready for those deeper conversations. Does that make sense? I don't feel like I explained yeah, that. Yeah. Well. Okay. All right. I mean, I, yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that makes and, a lot of sense. 
And that would also reflect the low stakes uh, um, scoring of what these assessments are too, right? I mean, if we put 50 points on a CPA, then then we're putting a lot of emphasis on it. I think he said he's putting five to six points on it. And so it, it's, it's just getting that foot in the door to introduce a new topic as well. And, and, and if I could add, Tom, um, the, and, and again, I'm not sure if this, this is an answer to your question, but as a result of doing the CPA, it helps me to understand that students are really challenged with understanding these mathematical computations. And so that's why it allows me to spend a lot of time with in-class activities around that. And it's, you know, it is really gratifying to watch students' eyes light up and say, I got it. I understand it. I'm still challenged about how to do it, but now I understand it. And so I don't know, that, that may very well have come out of the CPAs. Well, one of the things, uh, you know, that you, that you talked about was giving them a chance to, to do a little practice ahead of time, kind of bringing everybody up to the same level. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we spend a lot of time with, with going through examples in classrooms, in, small, in, uh, in groups, and then coming together as a, you know, uh, as a class, because a lot of times I'd like for them to work it out and then I'll have a volunteer uh, from their group to go to the board and explain it. So we spend, you know, a considerable amount of time doing that. The, the other thing that, uh, you, you know, I thought you mentioned that I think, uh, give me a, I don't always use the reports, uh, but using the reports to identify uh, those areas that might be problematic, uh, I think is a pretty good idea too. You can see that pretty quick, which questions they're struggling with. So. You can't focus on everything. You have a limited right. amount of time. So if you can identify those key areas uh, that maybe they're having a you know difficulty with, then you could, uh, you're better able to, to kind of uh, focus in on that. I think that's a great idea. Right. Right. Thank 